Good morning today to everyone in Ireland. Shout out Ireland. Ireland. Sorry, I unironically love the Irish. I was in Dublin airport one time. I met Whoopi Goldberg's ex-boyfriend and he was telling me what was about raising Whoopi Goldberg's kids and putting on a play where he had Mexican soldiers in drag. True story. Cool guy. Um, so, first and foremost, a lot of yous, a lot of yous, left me a lot of comments. On the uh, table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, Was shaving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your clean-shaven face. Despite the bulbous nose, unkempt hair, bulbous and nose persistent is swelling, crazy. you look a little younger, maybe. I, somebody left a comment that uh, articulated my feelings about it. Um, it was like a, it was like a physical change. Like, if you look on my page... Like a couple weeks ago, I had hair like, you know, um, like if you look in the Baldur's Gate videos, I had like pretty long hair and I was just going through it. And sometimes you just need to do drastic, something drastic. So I shaved my head and colored it, you know, and um, it's like making a change that feels like you're progressing and doesn't feel stagnant. I know it's cope, but I don't regret shaving Harry. Um... I think it's good for him, if anything, savvy. So, as I was saying, I got a, I got a lot of comments. People were saying, Anik, you have to go back to the church. There's something about the two millimeter hole. Fun fact, I did that. Um, I just somehow forgot to put it in the video. The the pale poisoning is, is I'm over radiated. So here it is. Last time on a very special episode of Disco Elysium. I'm gonna logic check with Suna. I'm pretty stacked yes. on logic what is because it? of the tech. You don't have to. You already have. A long time ago. F off! How? These thoughts formed in you somewhere. In a long forgotten discussion. Behind the kitchen table. In the evening light. Drinking coffee and smoking. With a friend. And a woman. She was there too. Her hair smelled of shampoo and she was smoking. What? The swallow, that's how it starts. It's a baby pail. Cause there's nothing in it. This place is done, Zo. But, but pale isn't here. We're thousands of kilometers from the edge. Nah, we're done. That comforts her. She looks up into the darkness under the nave. Then back at you. Oh, we're so cooked. Then what is that? It's nothing. No, it's less than nothing. No. Then the pale is... But the gradient, it clearly hasn't started yet. We are here and the pale is not. I understand. A theory of the pale where instead of an outer ocean, it metastasizes. Like a cancer or a mold, erupting in points inside the world. That's fucking insane, actually. According to this, how long... Yeah, there's, we're already losing sound here. ...and information, causing data losses in the East in Selindian front. Have you considered why it's formed in a church? And also when or how it might start growing, or if it has other effects? In addition to sound and data. An intellectual hunger fills her now, casting fear aside. I also have a question, since we are piling them on. How do you know this? I'm not doubting you. I'm simply curious as to how a detective of the RCM... Bro, you might have the worst vibes in the game. What did I do before I was a detective? Knows how to think this. The church was formed around it. Yeah, I was talking to old boy and that's what he said. Of course! A pine wood sarcophagus! Or a... A containment facility of some kind, built by the first settlers. Acting on an instinct. The game, it's doing it to me again. I'm getting pale radiation right now. I have considered the same. The bad news is, there were seven Pinewood churches built in the first decade oh, of Oh, it's done. We're so cooked. Most of them were burnt down during the revolution, or repurposed before, during the suzerain. I'm not saying all of them have one in them, but... Some of them might. A black grain hanging in the air. 
You think the presence of that puncture has somehow influenced the outcome of events here? Even say, software development? <laughs> she already made up her mind when she heard it. Some kind of great and uncaring force had to play a part. It wasn't only them. That's what I'm saying. All the failed businesses and ideologies. I told the producers we need to go and move to a normal office building with amenities. But no, the artists like the milieu, the writers like the history. I told them. I think actually it might be better if they don't know. Because I, I think they might not have the ability to go anywhere else. Especially the people in the fishing village. I told them. But no. Normal office buildings are bourgeois. An amateur anthropomorphic police officer. I'd like to say I've heard stranger things, but I'm not sure. This is a hell of a guess, however. Well worded, I might add. Yes, it is very interesting. But I wouldn't say you know. This is a guess. One that's going to have to be proved by anthropomorphic scientists. I used to be smart. She falls silent. The wind blows in through the hole in the stained glass window, cold and moist. I'm going to leave that out, but the rest, some of this I can use to start to explain this to mm. the rest of the team. Maybe I'll sound mad, but... Ma'am, you will certainly <laughs> sound mad. One more thing. Maybe a club for anodic music isn't the worst thing you can erect around this particular point in space the club is the only thing keeping this place together i wouldn't go so far as to no i'm right yeah once the light is on in the universe it will never go out my theory is that like if they make enough noise if they have enough bodies if there's enough what color enjoyment around this particular hole the hole might have a harder time growing. That might be the purpose for the church. Because what do people do in a church? They gather, they congregate, they make noise, they sing, they worship, all of that stuff. In a way, a club is just a church, a la one of hedonism. Dude, the game has me theory crafting like this is one piece. This is nuts. Thank you, Egghead. Let's leave it at that, shall we? We have an anthropogenic detection to perform in this district. Now back to today's episode of Disco Elysium. I will be heading back to the church immediately. Um, people are telling me to look at the stained glass, which I'm really fascinated by. Um, and I'm going to talk to everybody some more. I won't show all the dialogue scenes. I get like, what color? Anxious about sitting there and watching dialogue for 20 minutes even if it's enjoyable to me i don't know that it makes for very good um watching especially for the lot of you that have already played this game uh, you almost look like a professional the beardless it. nature of your cheeks makes the expression seem even more like a terrifying grimace also i ordered some uh custom dice for the dice maker so we'll go grab that yeah let's go grab that first anyway what do we got for today bev of the day is a el classic arizona green tea with the ginseng and honey shout out young lean for that ginseng strip joint uh how's my wife feeling dude say say thank you for last night dude i didn't it's just it's it's always when i don't expect it um you see you haven't left our little martinez yet still running around like some kind of cross-country law official. Uh, place is growing on me. Aye, but don't let it grow too much. This is not the place to settle down. Damn. Now, what's on your mind, officer? You, Lillian. You are always on my mind. Um, what was I saying? I don't recall. But, drawing a complete and total... Dude, Lilian effect is crazy, dude. Lilian effect is crazy. She actually just wiped my brain. That's insane. All right, well, um, let's check the traps. I'm so desperate for these traps to be. Things. I'm going into town for some reason. Yes, to pick up my dice. Dope. Dude, wouldn't it be awesome if it showed the dice in the game for when the game has to do like dice checks and it does like the success or the fail? 
it shows the dice you ordered. Wouldn't that be sick? It's always, I, was, I think I was saying, it's always when I don't expect it from this game, it catches me off guard. It like, it buries the lead. You know, it hides the tip of the spear. Um, I thought I was gonna have a nice wholesome date and a good moment that was gonna be good for Harry. And it, it was that. In all fairness, it was that. I just didn't expect it to like, make me dry heave my soul out, you know? Um, I also came in here, I bought a map from Plaisance. I looked around some of the books. So don't worry guys, I mean, I, I don't show everything. Maybe, shield time, shield time. Maybe I will gather all the cutout parts. Savvy? Maybe I'll gather all the parts that I cut out from the videos and make a little compilation um, and chuck it up on Patreon for the, for the patron. I read all your comments, by the way. If I don't respond to your comment, I'm genuinely sorry. Um, please understand. I get a lot of messages every day. My biggest platform is TikTok where I have like 400 something thousand at this point. It's constant messages over there and then there's Discord and then there's Twitter and then there's Instagram. And I'm not built like that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not about that life. I'm not about the social media life. Like if it wasn't good for my job, this, I really would want nothing to do with it. So um, I do my best to respond to all the emails and the comments. So please give me some time and I'll get back to you. Yeah. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? Oh my God. Did I say what the bev of the dude? I'm actually gorked. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm came to pick up my die. Very good. That will be seven real for one Whoa. custom die. One universal die for Wero Unfeathered. Wow. It feels icy. Just holding this die in your hand sends a jolt of cold down your spine through the dark resin. Dude, I want to make die. Out. I want to, dude, I would love to cast some dice for like, um, jaw. Dungeon and Dragon stuff. There's so much that I want to do, but I spend 40 hours a week doing shit that I only mildly kind of want to do or just don't want to do it at all. We live in a society. Classic Arizona. I said shout out to young Lena. Great. Tastes like um, green tea, ginseng, and garuga mess. I hope people don't think I'm making fun of that guy. I genuinely, in my heart of hearts, think that they're a very cool person. One of my biggest regrets is not going to Anime Club because I thought I was like too cool. I thought I was cooler than everybody there. Um, completely the opposite case, by the way. Let me tell you, all those like nerds that were in the cafeteria playing Yu-Gi-Oh and playing with their Nintendo DS's, they're still friends today. Ask me how many years it's been since I've talked to anyone from the football team, anyone from the track team, anyone from high school, period. Z zero, you know? So those bonds, those friendships, if you can just like be yourself authentically, even if you're gonna get shit for it, for like being a nerd or a dweeb or whatever, you've got a head start. I mean, look how popular Dungeons and Dragons and shit like that is nowadays, Savvy. Oh man, where's your, where's your, where's your friend? Officer, care to play your game with the lonely hog Did man? he die? Actually, never mind. Wouldn't be the same. He's dead, isn't he? The prick is gone. I, I can barely believe it. But he's really gone. He is trying to retain his jolly facade, but the underlying sadness casts a deep shadow over his wrinkled face. Yes. In peace. Damn. Damn. Rene looked a little bit like my grandpappy, not gonna lie to you. Okay, off to the church we go. You know, I gotta tell you, I think watching Nick at night, specifically The Nanny with Fran Fine, may have skewed my tastes in women to be, to be a bit strange because i'm what color i'm not gonna hold you hold you chat i hear a nasally i hear a nasally little voice like that you feel me 
Based on these videos, what would you guys describe my ideal woman as? Has glasses? Has dimples? Has a nasally voice? I don't know, man. Might be a little strange. People were like, yo, absolutely do all the checks with Andre. Okay. Savoir faire. Goodbye, office. It's Matorix. But I think the drugs don't help with this check. Oh, hey, man. It's good to see you. Yeah. And I think it also doesn't help when I put on the gear that gives me savoir faire. All right, we will give it a go anyway. Why not, right? You never know. Three percent. You close your eyes. You are kidding me! Leaving your brain to wonder, where did that little fluttering light go? I swear to. Scrape the video. There are no cuts. Nothing. What the fuck? Fuck, I got... This is why you always have to try. No matter how impossible, literally the odds, you always have to try. Holy fuck. Total darkness. You sink down the darkest fathoms of your own personal deep. Vertebrate by vertebrate. Through Did you guys set me up again? Am I about to cry? Stars of your mind. Here it will begin. Yeah, what was that about the informed skulls? I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Every vertebrate in your spine is an unformed skull ready to pop up and replace the old one. Like shark teeth. The one you're currently in has a little brain forming in it. Waiting for its turn. To rule the world. Is that literally true? Who are you? I am the spinal cord. I'm ready. Good. Because from what I can see, it's about to bust a move. Where did the music oh, go? Oh, don't worry. The music's still there. It's you who is gone. Did I ever tell you guys a story about how I used to be like a really good dancer? I think I did. I used to be a really good dancer. Like I'd go to parties with my mom and I'd dance and people would give me money. And my mom told my dad and my dad was like, that's dishonorable. Don't let him dance in public anymore. And I don't know how to dance well. This is a pivotal moment. Tr nothing. Just the immaculate silence of your spinal fluid. Who, who is making noise? Electrified. All right, bust a move. Foolhardy. Do you even know what's happening on the surface? Maybe a thousand years. Yeah, the spinal cord past. sounds like a Harkonnen. Or maybe you started spazzing out like two seconds ago did i try to dance and have a seizure with your eyes still closed the first thing you feel all the way back in the pivoting darkness of your own torso is warmth you have become a triumph of rhythmoplastics somewhere in a smelly wooden church on the coast of revachon the wounds from the war you waged on your body are healing twist by twist turn, turn by, by turn, turn. You must have touched upon an entirely new way of moving the human body. Every motion is pumping your brain full of endorphins. Open your eyes to the pioneer. Hardstyle and ironically rocks, hard dude. Style. Young Anarchy used to dance hardstyle, used to dance jump style, used to be a gabber. You, a little bit. Did a little bit of industrial dancing. A little bit. Back in my day, back in my day, I used to do a little bit of, uh, how did it go? What was my, my, uh, 
Oh my god, I forgot. It was like something like that. I used to do all of it, man. I used to be I used to be about it. I'm an old man. <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> you have become a Oh! 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 Harry! Dude, plus the fit I have him in? Damn! Jeez, dude, this is crazy. Free from self-awareness. No deliberation, only, and I mean only, execution. Oh my god! No way! Yes way, baby! With his real-to-real -real mixer blasted, the anthem of a future that will never come. The young man observes your moves. <laughs> With the gloves and the, and the pills in the hand! This is my goat! This is my goat, Harry! The goat! Dance! It's the law! The young man immediately bounces ah, ah, down ah, ah, ah. Andre, you're not hitting that shit for real. Embellishing it with some sort of the authority of the law is clearly unquestionable. Kim? What's going on here? Did he put? Please! squeezes the bridge of his nose the light please his please this is please redeem kim for me color please redeem kim he's having trouble adjusting to the new reality before <laughs> what's happening good for you i called you to dance bro we ain't going anywhere before we tear shit up, Kim. Get the fuck in here, Kim! That's what I'm saying! Kim, get in- I'm not kidding you. Get your ass in here. Get your goddamn groove on, Kim. Kim. Yeah. Whatever. Kim. Oh yeah? I did 15 years in the juvenile crime unit. I can do I this can is it. crazy right now, dude. Now check this shit out. The lieutenant begins to hear. Okay, Kim, alright! Got that shit! SL, come over here, baby. Lifts her headphones up slightly and raises her chin, looking at you expectantly. Asil, are you going to dance? Even Suna's on that shit. No, recording. The lead programmer throws the other young woman a knowing glance before turning Aye, whatever. her attention back. She's still at her mainframe, pressing buttons, reading printouts, but she started on her head alone. Da, 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 da. This is a miracle. The dynamic motion of your flailing body is bordering on the extreme. You're going off the charts. Ah, 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 ah. My goat. You feel as if turning on the hyperdrive would be a point of no return. Feels almost melancholy. Are you sure you have the entire possible for this? Yup, where are you? Now? Yes. Above my hair, man. 
Is his hair radio? Okay, this is too invasive. Excuse me. On the coast of the Martinez Inlet, in a small weather-beaten stone church built 380 years ago by settlers from the Occident, most likely to guard against an anomaly. Did Psyche grave? An officer of the RCM is contorting his body into idiotically rigid shapes as he invents the future of dance music. It's the hardest anyone has ever danced. What if I die? What if I, what if I die? Just dancing so hard. I am La Revachelière. That's who she is. La Revachelière. Literally Revachol? I am the city. How are you talking to me? The modulations of my voice are noted down with thermometers and barometers. You feel me in your nostrils, on the this little is... hairs, on the back of your neck. This is... Like, there are people who want to argue that video games aren't art. But there's a very, very, very strong argument to be made that a video game can come close to being the most complete form of it. Because, I mean, we are firing on all cylinders. Visuals, fucking check. Music, check. As experiencing it, the emotions, the thoughts, the, the nerves, I, I mean... It's like a whole and complete experience and it's beyond hard to do, but they did it with Disco Elysium. Guy, what I wouldn't give for an H. Bomber guy uh, uh, video essay on Disco Elysium. This is, I hope one day I can make something that's like somewhere close to being this good because this is... I also reside in your lungs, in vestigial organs. Everywhere, well, there is well, space. Well, I don't want the pill to swallow you. I am a fragment of the world spirit, the genius Loki of Revachol. My heart is the wind corridor. The bottom of my air is red. I have a hundred thousand luminous arms. And you know the thing is? If you didn't invest in it, you wouldn't have gotten this. What color? If you didn't invest or get super lucky, you have to invest to get to this point at all. Your investments are being rewarded. Your time is being rewarded. They're not bleeding you dry for just your money. They're offering you a whole experience. I wish I bought this game full price. I regret buying this game on sale. I wish I bought it full fucking price. Because... 10 out of 10 video game. I will never play this again. Come morning, I carry industrial dust and let it settle on tree leaves. I shake the dust from those leaves and onto your coat. I've seen you. I've seen you. I've seen you with her. And I've seen you without her. Be gentle. I've seen you on the crescent of the hill. You are an officer of the citizens' militia, Jean Tinrebu. When you wear your coat, you wear my soul. You move through my streets freely, in motor carriages and on foot. You have access to the hidden places. You also circulate among those who are hidden. I need you. You can keep me on this earth. Be vigilant. I love you. It's the way I'm so obsessed with this voice. And to hear it say, I love you. An officer of the RCM is lying on the floor of a small church with his eyes. I passed the back fuck out dancing. And his tongue lolling out. Several others are standing around him. He slowly comes to. 
I had a good rest there. I spoke to the shitty Roy Vachol Kim. Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah, Noid. I bet you did. Those were some advanced moves, man. That's all great, but we should really get going. We spent enough time doing aerobic exercise for today. Man. I see why you guys were so horny for me to... It might be imagining it, but it feels like Egghead turned the volume. Rah! Is his respect. Man. Now. Now, man. Now. Now imagine if we could do that, right? But with like a thousand people. End of human development. Mission complete. All right. You're absolutely beat. Muscles relaxed and feet like noodles underneath. Goodbye, officer. Take care, Andre. Like, I get why you guys wanted me to do that check so bad. Okay, so I'm trying to grind so I can unlock the skill point to do the church checker. So I went and I stole the bird. The bird. Give it to Garta. Garta, I'll take this bell. Can I help you? What is this thing? <laughs> what, the interior decorating kind? You know, I'm sorry. This is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. Yeah? I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. Got it. Awesome. So, I don't know. Thank you. I'm going to go with thank you. Thanks. People just don't know how to accept gifts. Especially taxidermy. He likes it. <laughs> he likes the bird. This was mostly about the fucking cardio. Massive cardio here. You. I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. All right, Kim. All right, Kim. You know it, Kim. You're getting back in my good graces. The dancing. Okay, we've got our skill point. We got to go back to the church. But let me see if I can. Uh... I can't believe this shit. I. You know what? You want to know something really interesting? I actually didn't clock that it was the guy on the radio in a wig. I literally just thought this is what he looked like. I. I actually thought it was just a guy with this kind of. Uh, I, didn't clock that it was a wig, no bullshit. I'm going to say no. Just to see what you'll say to that. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, all right. He said okay. Give it a rest. Okay. I was clearly wrong. He is a firefighter, male nurse, animal control aide. Okay. Back to the shush. The mother of humanism stands above you. A precious and complex jigsaw of broken shards falls into place in front of you. A ghostly reconstruction of the stained glass window. Before it was shattered, there was an older woman beneath the younger one. And a text. A light motif below them both. What does it say? Below both women, in luminous black letters. Après la vie mort? La vie mort. Après la mort? Après la mort. La vie de nouveau? La vie de nouveau. Really? And then, along the left side, Après le monde, la clé. Après le clé, le monde de nouveau. Death, life again. After the world, the pain. The pale. After the pain, the, the world, world again. again. This makes me think about that theory that the universe. Um, uh, how does it go? It's just expanding rapidly heat death of the universe or like um you know it's expanding rapidly but black holes keep being created eventually they become super mega black holes all the black holes become sucking up the other black holes and then everything in the universe gets sucked into one point and then eventually boom another big bang 
And so the universe is just doing this over and over again? Maybe, maybe. This exaltation is common in Dolorian sacralism. In the early years, it was even incorporated as the RCM slogan. No more, however. Why? It was deemed subservient to use a strongly moral intern related motto. We already suspected of boot licking. The sentence was also seen as too feminine. <laughs> it was a macho thing. What's the motto now? Justice, union, prudence, and force. I like the other one better. So do I. Good. Who is the older woman? The scutcheon on her throne says, Irene the Navigator. It's literally Dune! What do you mean, the Navigator? The older woman wearing thick rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden rights apfel in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen her innocence day advised. Above, she herself is whole. Small figures of wise men, common men, worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, thirty years, stand in a row guarding her. It must have taken years to produce this work in all its dizzying detail. Who shattered the mosaic? Was it me? Putain. Unknown. Something during the raid the lieutenant mentioned. Or just hooligans looking for something to break. The mother of humanism towers above you. Do I have to do this one as well? On a cracked pane of glass. Well, gamers, here we are. This isn't just glass. These are old computation components. Yes, filament memories. From the time when wires were cast in glass. Slides with an inlaid nervous system. She's building something. The how was a closely guarded secret. Something that was locked in safes and human heads across the river where they were manufactured. As to why, your fingers don't know. So it is. I think it is used to form a single system, slotted in the wall. The rest of the building seems to have been picked clean. These? No. These are old filament memories. I hope you're not expecting to find the device here. You will be disappointed. All you'll find here is pain. All you'll find here is pain. Yeah, I know that. Right, let's get through this. I'm sorry if I'm missing something and going past this point of no return. Uh, truth be told, this is already a lot of... This is already a lot more backtracking than I would tolerate in any other video game. This video game is just arguably the best I've ever played. Uh, I'm, um, um, Como se dice? I'm only disappointed about not finding the Insulindian Phasmid and not being able to do more for Kuno. But yeah, I think that's it. And I don't feel like grinding for 5 10 XP. Your entire body is paralyzed. Aggressive white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before. Through the static. You hear a woman's voice. It's like a thousand radio stations are being blasted into your head. I don't have my gun equipped. Her words are the only ones you can make out. I know you're feeling pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance. But here we are. The voice coming through the world will of pain is not malicious. She doesn't want to hurt you, but she has to. Doesn't wish to hurt you, not according to your air canals. Wait, no, not even your air canals. This is going directly into your neural pathway. That's an awful decision. Why would you not want to shield yourself from it? It's an entirely new type of experience. Way worse than all the previous ones. Don't focus on the pain. Focus on doing your job. Tell her she's under arrest. No, I'm not going to fucking kill you. If that had been my plan, you'd be dead already. All things considered, I'm being pretty reasonable here. I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. The explosion of static you're hearing is the ULAN frequency. 
She was already working on this before the mail got all right. Blasted from that pale emitter that Angus mentioned. Saw my equations? You've been sniffing through my lorry, right? I expected as much. I am a bit surprised you knew what you were looking at. You should probably check on Kim. That's what good partners do. A pale latitude compressor is used to sort of make the pale more manageable. I trust a lot of these they said you Kim is competent. Radio signal grid on the pale. Literally crunch the distance across it. Kim is competent. Kim is fine if I don't look at him. If I take my eyes off her though? Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pale, people lose their minds in just a few years. So, what we are experiencing is a concentration of radio waves. Precisely. This is an industrial strength paraboloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you may be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. She's been holed up in here for a while with no one to talk to. Keep her talking, and you just might get an opportunity to break you loose. Shivers told me to put my coat on, and so I put it on, and I trust Shivers. Yeah, I stuck my head in there before using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. I built it myself. That's illegal. I'm guessing it's patented. But we are beyond that, aren't we? Oh yeah. Way beyond. No. Once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like waking out of a very confusing dream. Oh. Yeah, let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. If you've got something really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. Damn this. God damn it. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. The gun she's carrying is a two-barreled front loader, not like the murder weapon. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. Just keep her talking, and you'll get through this. Say... If I succeeded a 3% check, I can fail a 92% check too, yeah? I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while. So you found my shack, huh? I'm not surprised. Her tone is bitter. She thinks she's been betrayed. So nice. That's one knife I didn't want to find to my back. I was. Before I caught you in the pale latitude compressor, I'm fine now. It was dark in the shack. The waves outside had calmed down. She looked at the loaded gun. Then she cracked the barrel open and took the bullet out. Not today. She's gonna let me just walk to it? Compressor lies broken on its side. 
It's quiet in your head again. It still hurts like hell, but... Kim's fine. My thinking is, if I yell, you're under arrest. She's bolting immediately. If I glance back, she's bolting. <sighs> All good, officer. Be careful. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Oh, fuck it. Problem solving. Ma'am, put the gun down. It's That's over, not huh? the solution to your problems. Oh, yes, it is. I don't believe. You should know the words to say. You've been here yourself. So why is it not coming to you? Because you've been going around pointing a gun at yourself, trying to answer the same question in vain. Her finger squeezes the trigger now. No, wait. Finally, it comes to you. <laughs> a way to connect with her. She flashes you an incredulous grin. Then she exhales sharply, shakes her head, and pulls the trigger. You watch as her brains trickle out through her neon hair. What was the check? It was 17%. I don't remember what it was. I don't remember if it was rhetoric. Lieutenant Yefreitor Dubois, control your emotions. We did our job. This won't be the worst thing that happens on this case, believe me. You can't let this break you. There is no coming back from this one. It will stay with you in nightmares. We clean up. It may take days for processing to pick up her body. We need to move it somewhere. That the tent there. plain red tent stands by dispassionately. It was pitched by practiced hands. She was used to camping out. You see a rolled up sleeping bag and personal belongings. I mean like, I don't know, maybe I should have let her run. We should put her in the sleeping bag so the rats don't get to her. The lieutenant nods. There she lies, cocooned in the sleeping bag, surrounded by empty cigarette packs, books, and half-read magazines. Magazines? You should look through them. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see 
a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. You know what would be really funny? Is if she actually is innocent and if Classia is responsible. Because the way she grinned at me when I implied about Classia. And I, I don't know. I, I have a hard time believing that... Um, Someone like Ruby would uh, would end up in that position and do shit like that. I don't know. I feel like Ruby is too smart for that, you know. But you know, smartest people I've ever met have also been overcome by emotion and done a lot of really stupid shit. So, see anything? Rega Monthly Journal of Material Science. More technological digest. One you pocket the worn brown leather journal. She watches by, motionless. We should read this immediately, like right now. A thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around. In that it's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name, Schneller. This was important to her when it was still hers. The journal falls open. About two-thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently. Perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out, with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. We could learn a lot from this. Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after. Professionalism is his coping mechanism. Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor, sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Short, wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. Staff issues. Always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. Nothing on March 4th. March 5th though, well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this, loyal to a fault, except, but that's another matter entirely. You have no idea what she means. These are personal notes. Don't expect to understand all of it. The most recent entry is from today. It reads, Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run. Not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. I don't think she killed the mercenary. It looks like she might have been framed. Too bad we didn't really get to hear her side of the story. This whole thing was a detour and a fatal one, he thinks. Don't get emotional. By the Hardy Boys, by Classia, by us. Classia was the one who pointed the finger at Ruby. Perhaps she was trying to steer us away from herself or Either way, we need to keep an eye on her. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling in rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. Can somebody in the comments tell me if there was a way to have um, saved her? Let me know that, please, yeah? Bratan! Now is the time! Oh, you will see. Pass the 
spirits! The blue medicinal spirits! Grab the bottle and uncork it! It is time to unleash the other world! The bottle opens with a silent, mysterious hiss. The fumes rising from its mouth are as crisp as the northern winds, howling somewhere, lashing the boardwalk with brine and rain. An ancient warmth crawls under your skin. Now, Vratan, take me off! There's no way what I think is about to happen is about to happen. Your fingers manage to undo the oily knot and the necktie slides off. It looks so frail sitting there in your hand, weighing almost nothing. Now, put me in the bottle! As the necktie slides into the purifying liquid, large stains of grease rise off from it and float to the surface. There, they quickly dissolve and disappear completely, cleansed by the blue spirit fire of 98.7% pure alcohol. The fabric looks almost new again, no longer like a disgusting worm of the lower intestine, but like a colorful and deadly poisonous reef snake of the Insulindian ocean. The necktie floats in the bluish liquid with almost unearthly grace. There is silence. The lieutenant has been observing you quietly all this time. He's struggling to keep silent, but finally seems to give up. I've got to ask, what are you doing? That makes two of us. Let's not waste any more time under this boardwalk. We need to clear this all up somehow. I can't believe the necktie is fucking dead. Well, I have the skill point. I guess I can go, um, whisper encyclopedia -y. I don't feel bad right now, but worse than that, I kind of don't feel anything. I guess I feel like I could have done more to save Ruby, yeah? Encyclopedia. I have some glasses, I think, that give me Encyclopedia Plus 2, yeah? Damn, I'm not even enjoying the music. <laughs> I'm not enjoying the music anymore, man. I feel like it's gonna be a case of like... Everybody failed Ruby. When like Ruby was just like a genius and innocent and probably onto something that like... Like I wouldn't be surprised if I just um... If I just doomed the world. You know what I mean? Like what if Ruby had a way to stop the pale and I just killed her? The mother of humanism stands above it. I think I have something else, hold on. The mother of humanism said, despite the damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. No amount of Commodore Red could wipe her sad smile from She was breath. actually... ...to survive the deluge and haunts you still. And will haunt you forever. She actually she lived. All men, the highest category of historic individual, and more. An innocence is elected to office by the founding party, a precedent that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built to accommodate innocentic rule should it coincide with our time. An innocence is infallible. The decisions made by one are not decisions. They are inevitabilities. What would have happened anyway? Only accelerated, packed into decades instead of centuries. An innocence is a continuous compressed event. 
a sacred human being. It is an honor and a glory to live when one is in office. In innocence? Is what a Benny Gesserit mother? No, we are alone. 300 years ago, in the wake of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, by explorers from the continent of Mwindi, she is, among other things, the innocence of inter-isolary travel and the connected world. Many things, you know she was a woman of the court, the wife of an influential Marchese, and eventually the principal advisor to Irene La Navigateur, Queen of Seren, modern-day Sir Laclay, also that she was gorgeous beyond beauty. Draped in ancient sadness, are you sure you want to remember this bit of historic trivia? Standing under a long slender form like this, dwarfed? The past. It's a silo of sadness, fermenting. You should keep away. I'm here for the pain. No, you must know. Terribly, women of the court were expected to play both contract bridge and chess sufficiently well to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A simple I mean, grasp in matters of philosophy, theology, and science was encouraged. She was, by all means, a kept woman. She made the most of her position in the anti-Delorean court. A court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists of the day. In secret, she was becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state. A scalpel, a piercing gaze. She was an almost preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time, a messenger from the future of the species. We all fell in love with her, head over heels. Even before she was declared a really? princess, her influence was tremendous. It was on her advice that Irene Le Navigateur sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale, a costly often tragic endeavor, really? ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the new you, the piece of reality you're standing on. She was crowned two years after the first expedition returned, setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era in history. The luck is good the today. Era. The luck is so good today. That I'm surprised that uh, not being able to convince her to put her gun. Like, just like the luck in the air, you know? But uh, maybe I just gotta trust that. Maybe that was for the best. Wow, indeed. When her innocence was declared, and the queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her, she was so overcome with emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. Bystanders reported golden filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. That is why the lungs are the symbol of love for the cultures of the real belt. As did we all, the lands of the mess and the occident and even far away Supram Windy, altogether 21 of the 40 Mundial nations of the time immediately accepted innocentic rule, even before mm. her crowning. In a city called Advesperaskit in Vespa Messina, her homeland, the name of the city means evening comes. comes. But it happened on a winter's morning with the canals frozen and slush falling out of the sky. She was dressed in a white and pearl dress on an emptied out plaza with the crowd far away. Already her thirties the secret servicemen of the innocents were worried about an assassination attempt. Oh yes, she looked like humanity's young mother, a perfect mother. Did my wife look Insulting exactly like her or something? It was as if her face and shoulders and hands were covered in a soft down of underfeathers. You know this well, very well. Midwinter snow was beating the cobblestones around her. A small attache of officials stood by as her thirties placed a white gold wreath on her head. 
The crowning was mostly witnessed by secret servicemen. One of the men in this secret service killed her 22 years later. A young man who had come to suspect that Dolores Day was not entirely human, but something else. Something that had walked in our midst, watching us stumble for hundreds, if not thousands of years, until it decided to interfere, interfere in the course of our history. We were supposed to come up with this ourselves. The man was reported to have screamed at the innocents. Dolores Day was shot in the chest with a fowling piece eight times. The man, thought to be insane, said he once touched her and her body had been unnaturally warm, like a furnace, and that sometimes, while on duty, he observed her forgetting to breathe for over ten minutes. This inhuman quality was witnessed by many others as well. Really? And all. It is commonly attributed to mass hysteria and religious psychology. Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory, or what remains of it. But terrifying, it's a simple word. She was bad for humanity, and you shouldn't have started thinking about her. You already do. Although she's often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Day. I can't get Constantly over this game. surrounded by her thirties. She was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocences. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged against the Mesk state. And then there were the resettlement programs. The Mesk state tried to detach itself from innocentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating inter-secularism. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Marguerite were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force mm -hmm. she called the Army of Humanity. It's a funny name. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb. In icons such as this, she was also blonde, the blondest woman you have ever seen, with green eyes the color of the Pacific, Mare Interregnum. Little is known of her Marchese husband. It's as if he vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce Dolores Day to court. In conclusion, yes, there is something lonely. What was the problem with that? What was scary about even that? even terrifying that people seldom mention, but feel when they think of her. This subtle terror is part of her iconography. Right, naturally. Lieutenant Yefreiter, you've stood there for over five minutes. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? She's somehow connected to the case. She must be. That's mega cool, man. You coming up with theories in here like that, right on. We should fool that old spooker up, Andre. It'll only disturb the people who are trying to dance, unshackled by the failure of humanism. How about we don't do that, Lloyd? She looks cool. The mother of humanism stands above you. All right, well. That's interesting. I still can't tell how much of this game is. I mean, I guess like by virtue of the pale existing, we are dealing with, would you call it preternatural, supernatural things? Usually- I'm all out of shit to give, Loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Full ceramic armor is crazy, dude. Classia. Was that Classia? Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right? Shut up. You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shitfuck. This is the mercenary at the gates. 
His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. There's something very wrong with him. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The Kipt is merciful. Willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a it's jungle. It's not class here. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like that. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower, and he knows it. Peaceful. Rud Honkluin? You know what, though? They're cool as fuck with this armor on. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse. The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Fuck, there's a third one. How did we miss something like this? The sniper, I mean, I don't think we missed it. The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. He doesn't want to, but he must. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. I have no bullets, by the way. And my gun isn't equipped. A sound strategy. He's the leader. No, we have to step in. This is not going to end well if we, the mercenary tribunal. Dog, I can't access my tools. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. Is he fucking drunk? I think he's calmed down a bit. No, he didn't. He's about to open fire. He staggers backwards? That doesn't... He is. I was wrong. I'm about to get shot. But I was going to say, staggering doesn't denote calm down. Bitch, fuck! I don't see this helping. I don't see this helping. I say this and I can see them being like our commander died. You. You're probably gonna get killed too. I think I'm gonna kill you. I didn't think I had it in me to kill a cop. To your left, you hear the lieutenant cock his gun. Comes fucking dead. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. You feel your fists contract as you stand there between these men, all carrying real weapons. Even if it comes to a fight, it's always a good idea to drag it out. Get under his skin. I don't know about this getting under his skin. He'll only get under yours. I'm barely keeping you together here. This is it. Peace. Always peace. It has worked thus far. Start with the first idea you have. Move down from that. Please.
I can see this. Pissing them off further. He was such a great guy, he had blue eyes. I haven't, maybe it's my fault, I don't have much. The logical thing to do is, th is this. This is the logical thing to do because it has the highest chance of success. But the way you guys... The way you guys keep talking about this, fail. I'm, I'm dead. I'm fucking dead. Shoot me. It's over. I'm dead. You throw the bomb and it's way off. Yep. It's a fiasco, Brata! <laughs> hey! Wrap it up. Even at this distance, you can still make out the ugly tie suspended in blue liquid. It looks ex Wrap it up. Wrap it up, fellas. Wrap it wrap it up. Hey, I'll take Asensua. that shit. Around you, time starts moving again. The sounds of violence and panic. To your right, the killer raises his rifle and hey, you guys told me. You. His moves are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle. Bro, look at this sassy slowly. shooter! Bro, his stance up. This is a serious moment. An Easter AR FA7, built for taking out light armored vehicles. It will devastate you. Measure head has me. A low shot rings. You feel a tapping, like rain on your chest plate. Heavy drops of rain. Then the sound of dice rolling, as the cuirass distributes the shot evenly from plate to plate. You got hit. The armor took most of it, but still your ribcage burns. God! If I didn't like take the armor? Slowly seeping into your lungs. God, please. Two shots ring at once. One from the lieutenant's pistol, and the other from the balls. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Kim shot him. Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood. Don't give a shit about Glenn. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Oh God, watch out. You see two cold eyes looking at you through all the smoke and panic and a pistol raised aiming at your chest point blank. Then the man squeezes the trigger. I want to look him in the eye and, and let it happen. But what color? I'm a gambling man. The answer lies in the heart of battle. Green. Oh! It's been very real. It's been very good, soldiers. I had fun. I had fun. You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. The Hardy Boys are yelling. Someone is running, jumping over you. In the background, you hear gunfire shatter glass, and then a man in pain. A familiar sound. It's Titus with a splat like meat. You hear bullets rip into him. His voice still Shh, giving I got the worst ending, huh? Fainter. A gurgle. He's not gonna make it. Warm blood pools underneath you. It's sticky, and there's so much of it. Don't go into shock. Hold on. Most of what's down there. It's all gone. Open your eyes now. No, no. It's just nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. You're bleeding out.
Stay with me. Yes, keep talking. You hear me? Stay awake. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy, and the sounds ever more distant. And the cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away. Almost gone. When a shadow towering, someone stands there, raising his pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. No, you scream. Behind you, from your bloody lips, your eyes are full of fear. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant turns around and fires, his body falling on yours in the course of the motion. If Kim lives, I'm fine with everything. I did say I wanted to die at the end of this playthrough. If Kim lives and I die, I'm fine with everything that happened here today. You hear a roar of pain, a death scream. The sound disappears like someone pressed stop on the tape. The hulking figure, too, is gone. And so is Kim. This is dead. One more door, baby. One more door. Of course. I know you do. Everybody leaves when they get the chance. Go on, keep falling. Deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. Just let me die. Just let me die, bro. Instead of the owls hurting, moaning in his sleep, and rotting and being disinfected and no please let me die i don't want to be the one that survives saliva in his mouth drifting in painkillers thrashing in his warm sleep he can't go not before the case is solved there was a radio in the distance a radio of the world playing sounds good morning elysium Soon he will return to the world. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. It was him. He is the infernal engine. He never stops. He only gets wild. I don't want to wake up. You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple, from the pain. It's nothing. You're alive. That's what matters. Sunrise, Arabellon. You tried to throw an improvised petroleum bomb. It missed. Then you said, it's a fiasco, but I thought it A firefight ensued. <laughs> As retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He hit the cuirass. I heard it go off. I was looking for a clear line of sight to him. He sounds a tiny bit sorry. He did not find it before you got hit. I shot and wounded him. While Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. He did not survive. Don't care about Glenn. This is not the first person to die in his place. He goes on. Titus. Titus, though? Angus and Theo charged. Angus and Theo died before they made it to intensive care. Titus died in the hospital. Yesterday. Alain and the young musician. I forget his name. They are all that's left. Titus shouldn't have died. Ruby shouldn't have died. Yes. You were bleeding out. I think you said something about your wife. And you warned me. I was able to disarm the Major before he got the jump on me. Thank you. Although... I was not able to kill him, as I should have. Cranel took him. A stray bullet killed the Pole, though. And that's what happened. Five. Glenn, Theo, Shanky, Angus. The fat one. He took a lot of bullets. <laughs> and Titus. 
It's fucked up, man. Shut up, Kim. This is the one. He's in a private hospital across the river. Colonel claimed him from the local butcher shop where Titus died. Turns out he's insured. There is unveiled anger in his voice. We won't get to him anymore. The good news is he's not coming here either. I did some damage. Yes. All. Total yes, shit show, Lisa. Bratan. Seven people are dead. It's not a success. He said seven, but here it says six. Plus one. Ruby. But what's done is done. The violence is cold enough. The Hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. And we are still alive. Both of us. His smoking. His hunched back. You have it worse. But he took a real beating. That cigarette has medicinal purposes. <laughs> Is Kim smoking weed? Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary thing. Cops like it. The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. The worst thing is, it, it is all my fault because of the, But I don't know that I could have... I don't know that... God, it, all right, well, you'll tell me. I'm sure you'll tell me. I know you guys are going to yell at me. You guys are going to yell at me. I think we may have held it off for now. Barely. Yes, we have also completely failed. But that's okay. Yes, the joke wasn't funny anymore. I took it off. The close proximity of death must have made the lieutenant contemplate his life. Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your tie. It appears no major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurochrome. The bruising in your shoulder is negligible. The armor took the brunt of the fire. We will see. If it's possible, then by pure willpower alone, you are going to have to become a psycho locomotor. Good. You'll need to be. Whatever that is. No. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vitmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. Back to that shithole, he says. I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. I'm sure they are worried about you. Easy now. You can take it. Just don't lean on that leg of yours too heavily. How are you? Your disco days should have been done quite a while back, Lieutenant Vifreiter. I honestly don't know. We can't talk to Everard. The harbor is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. And Joyce has left too. Yes, she left yesterday morning. To meet the board of wild pines, oh, that is what I've heard. There's a pin somewhere in the machine that keeps Connell from sending in a death squad. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. It, oh yes, she left 20 minutes prior to the tribunal showing up. I asked Mr. Gart. Turns out it was a bad idea not to arrest her. But maybe it was a good deed that will pay off in heaven. Who would have figured? That was our job to find out, wasn't it? Honestly, I just don't know. Our circle of suspects is dead and gone. It's not a circle at all. It's hey, a Hey, Chad, I'm sorry I got you guys the worst ending. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. What? Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to catch everything. It's extremely easy. There are thousands lying around from the war, all completely unusable. It's precisely how easy it is that makes that bullet useless. 
I don't know. That's been there for years. He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. It really is very hard. No. Are you ready to limp? Good. Where do you want to limp to? A gust of wind blows in from the bay. The dual aluminium box around you vibrates imperceptibly. A familiar cold, a red thread on the roof upstairs. Taut, plucked like a string by the gust. Why not? Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye. From a distant sunset, a stage light, flash photography, nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights, and they soul shit. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop, Dick Mullen. Salam Rocky Bayi. With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you, and you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a... <sighs> <laughs> Ain't my fault, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>